good evening. Welcome to Evening Prayers on Wednesday the 15th of September. And we're going to begin with um, a sentence of scripture that's in the Evening Prayer for the Worship Book. And it says this. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and has entrusted us with that message of reconciliation. And a prayer. God and Father of all, as this day ends, we offer up its hours in praise to you. As we come to time now to take our rest, unite us by your Spirit in praise of Jesus our Lord, who is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, in whom we make our prayer. Amen. Take a moment to be quiet, again maybe to breathe slowly, to receive in the life of God that comes by his Spirit, as we take our rest from all that's happened in our day and look at him. Thank you God our Father that you welcome us here. We come because of Jesus and all he's done, and we come in the power of the Spirit to listen to you. Help us to do just that now, in your name. Today's living letter, epistle, is 1 Corinthians 2. We'll continue 1 Corinthians 2 tomorrow as well, finish up the chapter. But just the first five verses, and we've got, uh, it's fantastic, we've got Johnny Cash reading 1 Corinthians, so away with you Poirot. We've uh, got Johnny uh, reading from uh, the New King James, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and verses 1 to 5. Chapter 2 And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Many years ago, I think in the 1960s, there was a famous book written by a man called Eric Byrne, and the, the um, uh, book was called The Games People Play. And it didn't mean football and rugby. It meant the kind of psychological games and, um, uh, yeah, that kind of thing that we play with each other, uh, particularly in the workplace even. And he had one called Niggy Sob. <laughs> and um, it was one of those where people play word games with another to trap another kind of you say that then you'll say that oh, i'm going to say this in restore i'll bring you into the spider's web and i'll catch you and it was called niggy sob because it was the letters now i've got you son of a gun except, <laughs> except it doesn't rhyme with b does it but you know what i mean yes now i've got you and sometimes we can be clever with words can't we i think sometimes that i'm clever with words you know i know how to get people to respond to something and if I want my way well will I say it that way or this way that's not good being like that being clever with words in the wrong way so I'm really fascinated that when Paul says he went to Corinth he says he was really tongue-tied and he was really nervous you don't think of Paul like that do you like he's a new local preacher and he and he's really feels that his words were faltering and not very good but what he says is that doesn't matter because he wasn't doing it just on his own strength in his own words in his own cleverness with words he was doing it in the strength of jesus in the power of the spirit i used to have a superintendent minister i won't name him because that might embarrass him if he's still around indeed and uh, i remember him saying once at a kind of oh i don't know, it's like a study day like we'd have in our circuit and he was saying oh i'm not much of a minister and, you know, I thought to myself, you know, I hear people say that sometimes, that sort of humility thing, or it's not me, it's Jesus, you know, all that stuff. And I sometimes I don't believe them because they're very good at everything. But I believed him because he did struggle 
with getting his words right. He did struggle with, um, uh, you know, being not conscientious, but being articulate and clever in his ministry. And yet he was just saying, yeah, but I am what I am. And it's God that matters. And I thought, yes, I believe you about that. You know, we preachers and we leaders need to get out of the way so that Jesus can shine. We're going to hear a, a song by the uh, worship leader Tim Hughes and it just says, May the words of my mouth speak of you, speak of you, Jesus. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart Bless your name, bless your name, Jesus And the deeds of the day And the truth in my way Speak of you, speak of you, Jesus For this is what I'm glad to do It's time to live a life of love that pleases you Lord, may the words of our mouths speak of you. And so we bring before you the kind of places we go to where we have to use words. That might be as simple as a conversation. How often, Lord, does our conversation border on the eternal? Border on heaven and Jesus. We think about people we may disagree with. How often are we planning to be confrontational and difficult? Not speaking words of peace. We think of church meetings. 
and how many of them could be wasted words because we go round the houses or we get on our hobby horse, Lord, and we don't think about you. What does Jesus want here? I think of the words we use sometimes to describe public figures. We're unkind and unmerciful. How much of what we say, Lord, is I and not you? And as we meditate on this, we pray that our days may be different and that we may follow you. And now, as our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And a final prayer. Lord our God, at the ending of this day and in the darkness and silence of this night, cover us with healing and forgiveness that we may take our rest in peace through jesus christ our lord amen okay and i'll see you tomorrow for a bit more more corinthians 2 and a bit more johnny cash uh, tomorrow night bye now